Okay, look, if you've ever wanted to make an electronics product that you can actually sell, this is how you start. And I'm not talking about blinking an LED on a breadboard. I'm talking about something you can put in a box, ship to a stranger and have them use it without ever calling you for tech support. My example, I live in Arizona and rattlesnakes here are a thing. I don't want to walk in my dark garage and step on one, so I'm making a little electronics board that can turn on a light while the door is open so I can step inside, flip the light switch, all without being a scaredy cat worrying if there's a rattlesnake just inside my doorway. So similar to a motion activated light, but it only turns on while the door is open and for a short time after it should automatically shut itself off. Your product idea might be for something completely different, but the way we're going to go about designing it works for a thousand other things too. Hello and welcome to Fluxbench. My name's James and I'm a nerd and I hope you're a nerd too. Today we're gonna to be talking about how you can go past the, look, I made it and it works on my desk to actually selling real products. We're gonna get through the business side, the money side, and even the risk side, all of it. And you don't need an engineering degree or business degree, you just need to follow a process and actually finish. Here's the deal, I'm gonna be completely transparent about what's going on because it's easier for you to follow along when you understand where the road is going. We're gonna be covering in this series the whole journey from idea to after your first sale, making engineering decisions based on business reality, transparent money math so you know exactly what you're working with, how to make a real product people can buy, not just a desk toy. Dripping in field tips I've learned from shipping products. How to iterate inversion without getting lost. The risk and scale conversion so you don't blow yourself up financially. In this episode, we're gonna choose a idea, we're gonna check the numbers, and then order a PCB that's been designed just for this product. We're gonna not do any fluff or theory without action. If you don't like snakes, skip to two minutes and 15 seconds, else, Here's why I really do need a snake light. So now do you get my slithering scenario? Nope. We're starting with this little product because it's the perfect training wheels for selling electronics. It's battery operated, which means no scary mains wiring. It operates below 9 kilohertz or 9,000 hertz, so no expensive FCC testing. It's simple, but you can hook it up to a light, fan, motor, buzzer, whatever. And what I love about it most is it costs under a dollar in parts. You don't start by making a Tesla as your first product. You start with something small that won't bankrupt you if you mess up somewhere along the way, but will still teach you all the main skills and abilities that you'll need and reuse across all your future projects. So every project that I've ever made follows the same basic framework, inputs, logic, and outputs. For my snake light, it's gonna be simple. The input is a button that'll be pressed when the door is open. The output is turning on the light or LED or whatever I'm gonna connect it to in the future. But the secret sauce, the thing that really ties everything together, is the logic. The logic combines the inputs and the outputs to do whatever the useful thing is that you want. That is it. If I want to make a different product, I can simply swap the inputs to be any kind of sensor or trigger or whatever. I can swap the outputs to be basically anything I want to turn on or off or send a signal to. All sorts of toys and appliances work the same way. You press a button, it turns something on, or makes a sound, or does something for a bit and then shuts off. Garage doors, thermostats, headlamps, so many products that seem complex are instead intelligently designed to work on simple principles. With this same basic framework, you can build not only this, but a ton of other different products. The reason why most products fail is because they kind of messed up with the idea somehow. They were too ambitious, it was too complicated. They were trying to reinvent the wheel somehow and to be honest, most products are just like some other existing products out there, but the slight variation or twist on them, and that's not a bad thing. No one needs a hammer to do something different than what a hammer already does. Just make it with a different shaped handle or in a new color. Honestly, that is enough to differentiate yourself in the market. You need to figure out, given what you know and what you can do, which things that you think that you can make, which type of product or category, and then go and look and see what it's already out there. If you don't know where to start, then just start by making products for yourself. I use whatever I have available and I have 3D printers. I have a regular one and a resin one. And with those, I make silicone molds where I can cast cement, epoxy, polyurethane. 
I can do all sorts of things with the little bits of artistic skill that I barely have. But you got to figure out how you can solve your own problems, because if you can solve your problems, you can also solve other people's too. If you're starting out with no machinery, then you're going to probably be buying your enclosures and cases from someone else. To be honest, I think most 3D printed things look like prototypes, not products. But if you do it right and good enough, nobody cares or can tell. No matter what, you're probably going to be using some simple screws and glue to physically mount or attach your electronics to the enclosure and then use wires to connect things together. And often with a single microcontroller at the center for the logic. There's no magic here. You can do that. But if you don't think that you can make anything, just watch some videos of factories assembling products or people like Big Clive who disassemble products on YouTube. Or better yet, disassemble your old products before you throw them away. You definitely don't have to know everything to start, but there is a lot to it. So here's the honest truth. You have to run the money numbers, and if they don't work out, it's not a product, it's a hobby. You have to be able to work backwards and figure out this design that you plan to build and sell. Can it make money, and can it make enough money to justify your time and effort? Such as if I sell my light on Amazon for $12, I know that because shipping and fees on Amazon will be about $5. You can even pull up the little Amazon sales calculator and put it in here and look, it says the exact dollar amount, but ballpark, I have $7 of profit so far before I have to pay my other expenses. So let's say it costs me about $2 in parts to make it. Now I have $7 minus two equals $5 of profit. Well, if I'm not making this myself, I'm gonna have to pay someone else to make it. So what's this reasonable labor going to be at this amount of minutes and about this rate and let's say it comes out to about a dollar fifty so great five dollars minus dollar fifty equals three dollars and fifty cents in profit or whatever left so what if i just sell a hundred units a month that's reasonable right at three dollars and fifty cents each profit that's three hundred fifty dollars a month sounds good right but will that even cover your overhead probably not so either this has to be something that's done with very low overhead, so it's just a side hustle to bring in some extra money, or you're gonna have to combine this with multiple other products so that way together it adds up to a reasonable monthly income. Or I can raise the price. If I charge $16 instead of $12, my profit ends up at about 16 minus 5.50 in fees from Amazon, the same $2 in parts, $1.50 in labor, and now we have about $7 in profit, basically double before. Now selling 100 units a month is starting to be reasonable. I mean, it's still not quite enough, but it's starting to be something where I probably would invest a couple weekends of my time and maybe, you know, some odd hours here or there to go and get a $700 Kind of residual income where hopefully i can be doing whatever else i want in my life and just keep on getting this 700 dollars check in the mail month after month with minimal work so is it quite an, enough to live off of no but is it worth per, worth pursuing i think so especially if i have multiple products i might bring in 500 here a thousand there but combined a couple thousand dollars a month that is real money that's not a hobby that's a business. But my best words of advice, don't try to be the lowest priced item. People have money and will pay more for quality and value added. But if you compete just on price alone, your competition can always drop the prices for just long enough to put you out of business. Before you make your first prototype PCB, you're probably going to want to make either a breadboard or a perf board version of it. Just that way you can make sure everything's connected together before you kind of set it in stone and make a prototype PCB. I'm gonna do so using these little components I have here laying around the house, but this isn't quite a how to do electronics video, it's more of how to make electronic products video. We'll get back on that nerdy hardcore stuff later on. But I'd recommend checking out, I have one video about how to get into electronics, a second one about how to basically make anything by thinking like an engineer, and combine those with all the other great videos on YouTube about how to get electronics and how to learn whatever the heck you want, I think that you'll be fine if you want to get started. But back to the snake light. You can see here, this took me about 30 minutes to make using just simple electronic components. A capacitor, some resistors, buttons, and a thing called a comparator. It's a glorified timer when you put all these things together. You press a button and it fills up the capacitor. It is drained down by the resistor at a known rate. And then the comparator checks if the level of the capacitor is above or below a limit. If above the limit, it turns on the switch for the light, and below the limit, it turns it off. Simple as that. 
none of these have a microchip in them, so this is technically considered an analog circuit. This is the perfect thing for me. I can open the door, take a few snake-free steps before closing the door, and then take a few more steps to flip the garage light switch before the snake light turns off. Motion activated lights are great until they're not. Often they turn on when they shouldn't, draining what would have been months of battery into just a couple days or maybe a week. But when it only turns on when the door is open, you should be able to get hundreds if not thousands of uses, potentially lasting one to three years. Simple product, but adds real value to my life. Something I would actually pay money for. So now we can be confident making the PCB given we know which components we're going to be using and how they're all connected together. This step is basically laying out your circuit board using symbols in what they call a schematic. You add in all your parts and connect them together just like you did in your breadboard. For complicated things, that'd just be too much of a hassle to go and make on a breadboard or perf board, or once you get confident enough, you can just jump straight to making the PCB. Once you have everything in your schematic and it's all connected together, you generate your PCB. What that does is take all your parts and just kind of randomly plops them down in this little designer window where you then move them around and connect them together with these colored lines. It shows you which stuff still needs to get connected with the thin lines and the thick lines are the ones that you draw and it's going to be where the actual copper wires or traces as they're called in the PCB. This step is pretty much somewhere between Microsoft Paint and Sudoku. Well, there's a lot more to it, but that's the core concept. You can see there's more parts here than were just on the breadboard. I wanted to add a couple more different types of connectors to try them out. I added multiple capacitors scattered around the board, as well as different types of capacitors and a couple extra resistors in various places. Time to order. Just don't get seduced into buying a thousand PCBs because they're cheaper per unit. You'll end up with a big box in your garage full of bad boards. And the reason I know is because I've gotten seduced before. It turns out the entire batch of 2,000 circuit boards I ordered for the next few months of production didn't work. And it was my fault. I actually f***ed up so hard. You think, oh, it's only $100 for 500 boards. Why would I not do that instead of five boards for $20? Well, there is about a huge chance that you screwed up somewhere on your first PCB. It could be a small mistake, it could be a big mistake, it could be a tiny variation that you just really need to make if you want to go to market and you want this to really be the PCB that you have in your heart. Kind of cheesy, but the point is, you're going to have a difference between the first prototype PCB you made and the one you go to market with. So just expect to go through a couple different iterations, everyone does it. So once you're sure, maybe order a batch of 50 instead of five. And once that batch of 50 works out, then order a batch of 500 or 1000 or whatever. Scale up if you want or don't and just keep ordering batches of 50. But the main point is don't get seduced by those big board counts until you are absolutely sure that it works. All right, so you've seen the framework, you've seen the math, and you've even seen me go all the way from an idea to a prototype PCB. So now it's your turn. Pick your product, break it into inputs, logic, outputs, check your numbers. If you're ready to take the leap, design your PCB. In this next idea to income episode, we're gonna go and have the boards arriving from the factory. We're gonna test them out. We're gonna go and do some tweaks to them. We're gonna get them ready for market and that's where the real fun begins. But for now, go out there, make something awesome. You got this. <laughs>